Hi, my name is Thorsten. I'm a cinematographer. In this video, I'm going to show you how to modify the port keys LI, SDI, and turn it into a really amazing viewfinder. I would give it a focus pull right now, but... The LI, SDI could have been sold like hot cakes. I mean, an electronic viewfinder at this price point. Having HDMI and SDI inputs, very low power consumption. The possibility to power it with LPE6 batteries or externally. Having all the features you need like 3D LUTs, anamorphic disc wheels, guides, histogram, false color, even airy false color, waveform, peaking, zebra. It has it all, but the eyepiece. I'm so sorry, but it feels almost like a toy. It's the whole construction of it, and especially the diopter. Funny thing is, almost no YouTube video addresses this to the full extent. It's like everyone's trying to avoid this theme. I've seen a lot of videos about the LI, and a lot of them were mentioning that they got the LI from port keys as a gift for making a review, so maybe that's part of the issue. The most accurate reviews I read on Amazon, like this one. It's from an Italian customer saying that the biggest flaw, which is why I returned it, is that the internal lens that magnifies the screen heavily distorts the image unless the eye is always exactly in the center. Just move a few millimeter and it distorts everything, making it impossible to work. Another review says it's difficult to nail the focus, mentioning for an image that turns out to be too distant and small. Aside from the poor diopter lens and the maybe very cheap eye cushion problem, leaving that aside, why does the image feel too distant and small? Why is that? Did Portkeys make a mistake by choosing a panel that's only 2.5 inch diameter? For me it felt that there was something wrong with the old eyepiece. The panel seems to be decent, the features the EVF offers too. The build quality, except for the eyepiece of course, is actually quite nice and so is the price point of the whole product. So I thought, why not remove the whole eyepiece disaster and replace it with something that does a pretty good job since over a decade now, the Zaguto Set Finder. What I call IPs here, you could also call it a loop. So does the Kudo on their website. The Z Finder will still be built and, that's the best thing for a project here, they say that most of their loops are the exact same, the only thing that changes is the mounting frame. The Z Finder is available for more than a decade now, and as we only need the thing itself, which the Kudo says is still the same, we can easily get a used one on eBay. As I made this video, I found lots of them for about 30 to 60 dollars, which is great for your wallet and great for the planet too. What's also a big advantage, the Kudo still sells parts for the Z Finder, such as eye cushions, diopter lenses or, very nice, anti fog covers, which are awesome and never let me down in the past. So what they of course don't sell and we needed to design was our own mounting frame an adapter from the Portkeys LI to the Zaguto Set Finder. But first, we had to remove the eyepiece and see what's inside. For that, I went to a friend's workshop. To remove it, you will need a 1.5mm Inbus or, worked even better, a T6 Torx. There's one screw that has been filled with thread locker, I guess so Portkeys can see if it has been altered. We scratched it out with a small needle. I guess I don't have to tell you that doing all that will void, of course, any warranty you might still have. When you remove the eyepiece, please be super careful, because here comes the first surprise. Instead of attaching the panel to the main part of the EVF, Portkeys decided to tape it to the eyepiece, so after unscrewing it, the flat ribbon cable that connects the panel to the main board is very vulnerable. It's best if you mount the EVF to the table before you start working on it. So at this point, we realized we not only had to design an adapter from the port keys to the Z Finder, but also a tray for the panel itself. The most difficult part of the whole modification process is the following. 
removing the panel from the eyepiece without damaging it. I know, it looks scary and I want to be honest with you, it really was. First, I didn't dare to remove the adhesive tape from the panel itself as it looked super fragile and also I was afraid of damaging the silver foil on the back of the panel which is a reflective surface for the panel's backlight. So first we removed the panel from the eyepiece itself which was less scary and then we removed the tape from the panel. Before the next step of our modification I'd like to show you what I find is wrong with the eyepiece of the Ally. On my iPad I prepared an image that has exactly the same measures as the panel of the Ally. Now I place the eyepiece on top of it to give you an impression on how the loop behaves. As you can see, the loop does not magnify. It does the opposite. It shrinks the image, which is why the image seems to be too small and too distant to nail manual focus. Also, if you move your eye just a little bit off the center, here comes the distortion people were mentioning. Very annoying. Now comes the Z Finder with the exact same image on my iPad. The image is much bigger. The loop does what it's supposed to do. It magnifies the image, makes it easier for me to judge focus and immerse in the composition. In comparison, with the Z Finder you will get an image twice as large as Portkey's original loop delivers. Next we designed the tray for the panel to make it part of the viewfinder. We left room at the bottom, so you can just slide in the panel without the need of messing with the split ribbon cable. It also leaves space for the, what we think is, the backlight part. After that, we modeled the adapter frame for attaching the Z-Finder. You will still be able to use the same screws that come with the Ally, as they are long enough for our design. To make this modification easy accessible for everyone, we decided to put the files on Thingiverse for free, so you can print it with a 3D printer. However, it is possible to donate to our project on Thingiverse or on the website I put down below. If you're in the position to donate, we would be more than happy. While printing the parts, here are some notes for the printing process. We recommend using a nozzle of 0.4mm and PETG as printing material. In the printing process, please add a tiny bit of support for the corners of the tray part. The support will be easy to remove and the results will be much better than printing it without this option. So, this is it. This is all we need to finish our modification. At first, we carefully insert the panel into our tray and mount it. As you can hear, it snaps in with the base of the EVF. It feels very solid. The panel fits perfectly. It still has a little bit of space to make sure that the material can expand or shrink a tiny bit without damaging the panel. In fact, we chose PETG for that not to happen, but better be safe than sorry. Next we attach our mounting frame for the Z-Finder. Screw it in. This is very important. Please be absolutely sure to use at least one extender frame from the Kuto on top of our adapter. These are somewhat flexible, which our adapter is not. And as the Z-Finder covers the top screws, when you attach it, you won't be able to remove it without destroying the adapter or the Z-Finder this would be so frustrating, so please keep it in mind. One extender frame will do. Usually at least three of them come with the Z-Finder to adjust the distance to the panel if needed. Now we can attach our new eyepiece to our LI viewfinder. It snaps right in. Turn it on. Really, this is an upgrade that's absolutely worth it. 
It turns the Ally into an amazing professional electronic viewfinder. At this price point it's an absolute steal and with this modification I can highly recommend it. To remove the Z-Finder, just give the extender frame from the Kuto a gentle squeeze and here we go. Thank you for watching, I hope you liked it. As I said, if you're able to donate, you would make our day. But more important, good luck with your modification and have a lot of fun using it. I'm sure you'll love the result.